Before we start the show, I want to thank and recognize our sponsor, Christy McCullough, and her Mobile, Alabama firm, Empowered Family Law, empowering families to navigate difficult changes and create new beginnings. I would just say, look, it's really tough. No pain, no gain. Sometimes the hardest things in life, we have to push ourselves through and it it can become a wonderful blessing if you just keep going. And even though you can't see the end, just set your sight on on a goal and try to pursue that goal. And don't be so prideful that you think you've got to do it by yourself. When you have other people cheering you on and pushing you and encouraging you, it makes you reach your goal a lot easier. So allow people to be your cheerleader and help you be around the positive people that want to see you be successful. Hey everyone, this is Rod Kate and welcome to this week's episode of Rocket Motivation. This week's guest, who was a captain in the Army at the time, lost vision in his left eye when a rock hit his eye. On another occasion, while he was on the side of the road with car problems, an 18-wheeler had a blowout and the tire hit his right eye, causing him to become completely blind. After totally losing his sight, he became an artist, painting with acrylics and using textures to feel his way with his paintings. He's got a great story of inspiration and a never-quit attitude. Ricky Tryon, welcome to Rocket Motivation. Thank you for having me, Rod. I'm so thankful to be with you today. Well, all right. Well, Ricky, let's do this. Tell the listeners kind of where you are now in your life, kind of where you live, your family, what you do. Just kind of catch us up. Okay. Well, I just turned 65 in March, and my wife and I, Bonnie and I, have been married for 45 years. We live in Fairhope. We're very blessed with 10 grandchildren, three married children and 10 grandchildren, and uh, my wife, Bonnie, and I love to go to schools and, and all kinds of places, art camps to do art with children. And you are an artist, right? Yes, I'm an artist. A lot of times uh, when I'm in a in the public, some people will come up to me and say, are you the artist? And I'll say, well, I'm an artist. I don't know if I'm the artist. <laughs> well, you might you might be the artist. <laughs> Formerly known as Prince, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Ricky, let's do this. I mean, let's go back to when you lost your vision and let's start, you know, within the left eye, kind of where you were in your life at the time, what you were doing, what path were you on? Kind of tell us all about that. Well, I had already served about 17 years in the Army uh, and I was a captain. I was I had done all the education and training to become a major and I was promotable to major. And it was just a matter of months before I would uh, become a major. And I, you know, was really hoping to stay in for maybe 30 years. And, you know, I had dreams of being a colonel one day. And uh, my wife and children loved the being military family and traveling. And so everything was going great. So I really had a path, a, a goal set to follow the path of moving, uh, promoting and, and uh, improving my career in the Army. What happened was I was at a training we were doing a training exercise and the window was rolled down in my vehicle and a truck passed by and slung a rock through the window and hit me in my left eye. I had to go to the emergency room and I was like, okay, well, this will probably clear up and everything. But it turned out that you know I had to go to a lot of different doctors, Walter Reed up in uh, Maryland and a bunch of places. And they did all kinds of procedures, but they could never get my sight back in my left eye. They said the rep was to, uh, would not ever get my sight back. So I was medically retired. You were medically retired from the Army, not what you wanted to do. So what did you do after that job-wise? Well, we were stationed in Kansas, and we moved back to the eastern shore of Mobile Bay. We moved to Fairhope. I went back to my alma mater, uh, University of South Alabama, and uh, earned a master's degree in counseling with mainly emphasis in rehabilitation counseling. I was hoping to get to work with people with vision issues and things like that. And so I, I graduated in 1997 with a master's and I was able to get a job right away with the state of Alabama in Mobile. And, uh, and I was able to get a caseload to work with uh, visually impaired people in south the southwest of the state. Well, how long did you work with people on rehabilitation? Um, eight years. Well, everything was going good in that career. And then in August of 2000, I had adapted and was able to drive with one eye but I had been up in the North 
part of Baldwin County on a, a hot August day and my car, he overheated on me on the, on the side of the road and I got out to check on my car and that's when the 18-wheeler came by and blew out a tire, slung the tire uh, and hit me in my right eye, which caused me blindness. Ricky, that's, you know, you talk about some bad luck. <laughs> in the army, you're in the car and so rocks get slung up and hit your left eye. You're on the side of the road because your car overheats, and then an 18-wheeler comes by and has a blowout, and it now hits your right eye, and so now you're completely blind. I would think the odds of that happening would be so low. I mean, have you ever stopped to think about, I mean, God, I cannot believe this has happened. Yes, and when I tell this story to different people, it's amazing the different reactions I get Some. Some people will say, well, you're bad luck. I wouldn't want to stand by you in a lightning storm or, uh, you know, they just or sometimes they'll say, what did you do to make God so mad at you, you know, to to do that to you? So I've tried over the years to have a good response for those types of when they react like that toward me. Which is what? I react and say, well, you know, I'm a very blessed and the happiest person I've ever been in my whole life life and I wouldn't trade anything. I, you know, if I could snap my fingers and get my sight back, I wouldn't do it. And um, that I don't believe God did it to me. I believe God allows things to happen because God knows the big picture and he could see that one day he could use me as one of his uh, instruments to try to inspire other people. That's what I said. I got you. Well, right when it happened, especially when, when right after you, you know, lost vision in both eyes, what's going through your mind kind of like immediately or within the first, I don't know, month or so afterwards where now you, I mean, you are completely blind. You know, what's going through your mind at this time? I had a lot of bad thoughts, right? I really thought a lot about harming myself. I uh, felt like I I was in a real funk, a real, you know, kind of when you're in the middle of a storm and you can't see your way out of the storm. And uh, I was thinking about, you know, harming myself. I thought I was going to be a burden to my wife and our three children were teenagers at the time. And I just thought, gosh, I'm useless now. I can't do anything. My career's over. I had a real negative attitude for a couple of months, but thank goodness I had people praying for me and people, friends that would come and give me a uh, inspiration and scriptures and quotes from Helen Keller and tell me about other people that have overcome blindness and gone on to do great things. So eventually I was able to get out of that uh, negative hole that I was in. Well, was, was there a certain time? I mean, there did something just kind of, did the light bulb just go on it? I mean, what happened to, or was it maybe it was just gradual, but you're completely blind. You are in a funk. I, I would assume you, you've had some really down days then I know you got people helping and, you know, supporting you, but how do you turn the corner? The way that I really was able to turn the corner was swallowing my pride. The hardest part was not willing to let people help me and not at learn. I wouldn't ask for help. I wouldn't let anybody help me. And I didn't want to receive the use of a cane or anything to help me because I didn't want people to think of me. Look, oh, look at that poor blind guy. And but eventually, after falling so many times and you know my pride <laughs> being hurt pretty bad, I you know I was humble to a point where I started letting people help me, and and then I would ask people for help. Even today, I still was like, gosh, I don't want to bother that person. And then I thought, well, you know, they told me that they want me to call them, and so I have to argue with myself uh, to make myself call and ask for help sometimes. So, but once I did let people help me. It's like all these blessings started coming my way. It's like, it was kind of like, you know, aha type moment where I was like, okay, this is how I'm going to become, <laughs> move on is by letting people help me not be prideful. <laughs> gotcha. well, well, let's talk about the painting that you're doing now. And now, how did that come about? How did you, first of all, how did you become interested in it? And I, and I know it's not like you were, were not an artist before. You did pen and ink drawings. So, but now you're, now you're completely blind. What was it that hit your mind that said, you know what, I want to start painting? How did it all come about? Really, I just thought art was over. I just thought, okay, don't even think about that. And, but out of the blue, one afternoon, an old friend of my wife and I that we went to, high school with, uh, and she's an artist. Well, her name's Vicki Nix Cook. Her dad was the mayor in Daphne for about, I mean, in Fairhope for about 28 years, uh, Mayor Jim Nix. But Vicki called me 
And she said, Ricky, I feel so bad you're not doing art anymore. I remember all of your pen and ink drawings. She said, I think you still have all those images in your mind. And we just got to figure out a way to put, use those images that are in your mind and figure out a way to use textures and things like that. She said, would you let me help you? And I said, yes. And I got very excited. And so she started taking me to the Eastern Shore Art Center in Fairhope. And uh, I was amazed that there were other artists there that were just reaching out and wanting to take me under the, under their wing too. And uh, a, a fellow that does uh, pottery and sculpting. So, so I started learning 3D art and learning how to use all kinds of textures and I just really started getting like a great confidence that made me want to do more and more and try more and just open my mind to doing all kinds of art. Right. Well, and you, you had some inspiration. I mean, why don't you tell the listeners about your uncle? Well, I was born in March of 1957. That same year, August of 1957, my uncle Ronald Tryon, he was 17. And he and some of his friends decided to go down to the bay to the old Mayday Pier and they were diving and he evidently dove into a shallow area, broke his neck and he became a quadriplegic. He was paralyzed from his neck down and uh, his parents, who are my grandparents, chose to take care of him at their home on a farm in Belforest. And and he loved art before he broke his neck. And uh, so his mom helped him get somebody, make a mouthpiece to put in his mouth that would hold a stick and she could tape a pencil to it or a paintbrush. And she set up his paints and uh, helped him start doing art. And he took a correspondence course by mail through famous artists of America, which were up in Connecticut. They're still there. But back in those days, Norman Rockwell was one of the artists that uh, would send art back and forth and grade his art and tell him how to improve his art. But as a child, I would sit and watch my Uncle Ronald, and I was just in awe of him. He was the kind of guy that never complained. He smiled all the time. He was just a bright ray of sunshine. and I think everybody was just amazed in spite of his situation. He was so positive. And it's just kind of how can a person that's so totally dependent on everybody, he had to be fed, he had to be changed, everything, and he just had this positive, happy attitude about him. I always wanted to be like him. I, I was always like, I hope I can be, have that attitude all, all my life and inspire people the way he did. Well, I, I think you've done it, don't you think? Well, I, <laughs> I hope so. I, I, I had a, a principal, I, I spoke at Orange Beach Elementary School a, a couple of months ago in, in front of all the, all the kids, and uh, the principal said, Kids, don't you think Mr. Ricky has made his Uncle Ronald proud? And uh, when she said that, I got kind of choked up. I'd never thought about making my Uncle Ronald proud, but all the kids cheered. And uh, that really, uh, really hit me. Well, I think my Uncle Ronald would be proud of me. Well, Ricky, right, so how do you paint? You know, because the first time we talked about this, I and I told you, you know, I, 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 I fool around a little bit with some painting and stuff. But to say I'm a novice or a ham and egger is probably giving me more credit than I, I deserve. But but so how do you actually do it? I mean, how do you actually do a painting when you cannot see? Well, I do have the images in my mind and I've learned a lot about our mind's eye. And I really believe that we do. If we've had vision that we still have the, the images in our mind, people that have not, they were born blind, they don't have a concept of a lot of things like what colors are and things like that. But fortunately, I was sighted most of my life. But what I do is, um, since I can't look at pictures and things, I think about what I'm passionate about. I'm, a, I'm passionate about sea life and all kinds of birds and nature and things. So I usually I try to pick out an image, a creature that I'm very passionate about, and then I, I get whatever size, usually but maybe a, a 16 by 20 canvas or something, and uh, I use puffy paint. Sometimes I draw with Elmer's glue, but it's a process of just, just drawing part of, it, of, a, of something, like a fish, maybe just the outline first, and then let it, let it dry, and then I can come back and feel where to put the eye, where to put the gill, where to put different fins, and then I have to let that dry. So everything is a process, like, because I've done really big fish schools with a lot of fish in it, but I have to start with one fish and <laughs> complete one fish and then add another one. So it's a process. And I would assume then that one thing about your painting is it must make you um, very patient. Yes, it, it does. And it's, I'm very thankful that I have a, a little 
art room upstairs in our house and I got a little area kind of marked off where I can work on a painting and I can uh, do a little bit on it each day, let it dry. And so it's just, it's nice that I have this kind of dedicated little space that I can work on my art and, uh, and to go through the process. Do you ever get frustrated now when you're painting or I guess really doing anything? Do, do you have any times when you do get frustrated? There's sometimes, uh, I think I get frustrated with myself when I have to ask somebody to help me with something. <laughs> and uh, like if my wife's not home and I run into something that I can't do, I have to wait for her to get back home. And then I have to just kind of tell myself, okay, just calm down, take a breath. This is not an emergency, you know? <laughs> and uh, so there, there's times where I get a little uh, anxious and, and things like that, but not, not a lot. Yeah. So how do you know then, when do you say, okay, this painting is finished? Well, I asked my wife, Bonnie, <laughs> to come look at it. And she's my best critic. And um, she'll tell me when I need to stop. She'll say, don't do anything else to that. Leave it alone. <laughs> so so I have gone too far with the painting and put too much on it. And then she said, boy, you really you should have stopped two days ago. <laughs> so I've gotten to a point now where I will ask her, I kind of do go to a certain point and say, what do you think? Should I stop? <laughs> yeah. Now, and are you, are you actively painting now? I'm, like, I mean, I know you're not right now. I mean, do you, do you have paintings going on as we speak? Yes. I, I have uh, three different painting commissions that I'm working on and, and I have a deadline for all three of those. So I'm working on those. I kind of, work on one and let it dry and then get another one out. So I try to kind of trade them off and let them dry. Go through, so I'm going through the process on three paintings at the same time. <laughs> well, Ricky, what have you learned about yourself? I mean, here you were, your plan was to be a career army person. Then this happened. First, you lose sight in one eye. So you have you start being a rehab counselor and then you lose sight in your other eye. But now you've you've overcome. You're you're a painter, and we're gonna at the end of the podcast we'll get into how people can find your your stuff. But what have you learned about yourself in going through this this life's journey? Well, it's more about what I've learned to trust God. I w- I've always been a Christian, but I became a lot stronger Christian after through all this. I've become dependent on God. I can walk around Fairhope by myself with my cane. And uh, favorite scripture is we walk by faith, not by sight. And I try to practice that every day. So when I'm walking around Fairhope, I'm I'm praying a lot. And I'm saying, Lord, I know you got your angels with me. And I know you're going to protect me. And pro- I sing some a few little hymns and things. I, people probably think I'm crazy because there goes a blind guy singing while he's going down the street. But I've learned, really, it's not about depending on my own strength and my own you know, self that it's really, I, I look at myself as that I'm a, an instrument and that I give God all the glory every day. I acknowledge him and everything. If somebody praises me, I'll say well, to God be the glory. I'm, I'm thankful that God has allowed me to do this. And so I try to push any, any light on me to God and not, you know, take any credit for it. Well, what do you think it was? And I know, you know, God is a, is a large part of your life and, and a large part of your strength, but what is it about you that, I mean, you know, you didn't give up and you didn't feel sorry for yourself. You know, that, that would have been an easy path. Why didn't you take that path? I think after growing up, seeing how my uncle Ronald didn't give up and how he just kept pushing himself and, uh, and he became a really awesome artist. And, um, and I just, you know, say, well, I don't want to give up like Uncle Ronald did. I want to keep pushing forward. Something good's going to come from all this. I mean, what's your philosophy on life? Like, you know, what are we supposed to get out of it? What's life all about as far as from your perspective? <laughs> I get that question a lot. And sometimes young people will ask me, you know, when they're talking, think about their career path like that. And you're right, like at the age of 65, I I have a lot more wisdom from a lot of trials and tribulation and things like that. But there's a a scripture that I think is almost like my philosophy on life, and it's Proverbs uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and it's, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And I, I believe that. I believe that when I do acknowledge him and not lean on my own understanding, 
that he does direct my path, that he opens doors for me. I can treat every time somebody calls me to go somewhere, whether it's Mississippi or Louisiana, I, Bonnie and I treat it like a call, like God is opening a door for us to go there to maybe help somebody that needs help, even if it's one person, you know. So, you know, young people will say, well, how do I know what my God's will is? And I say, well, look at how God has blessed you. What kind of talents has God blessed you with? And then acknowledge that and thank God for it. Say, God, help me use these gifts you've given me to to glorify you. Please lead me in that the path that you want me to go to glorify you through these gifts that you've given. So that's the way I try to advise young people right. about following the will of God. Ricky, what advice would you give to someone who is all of a sudden has had something happen to them and they have become blind? You've been through this. And I know, like you said at the beginning, it can be tough. What advice would you give somebody who is now newly blind? Well, I would tell them that there is light, you know, at the end of the tunnel, you know, there's sunshine outside of this storm. It's going to be difficult for a little while, but first of all, just try to accept that you are blind and then decide now what do I do? How am I going to function as a blind person? And then I let them know there are all kinds of free resources around our area, around the state of Alabama. And uh, I share a lot of uh, resources and phone numbers. And I, I've even had different people call people who are newly blind to contact them because sometimes you it's kind of like leading a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I, sometimes I'll give all the resources to a person like that and find out later that they haven't done anything. And I'll call them and say, have you, have you talked to this person and that person? No, I haven't done that yet. So sometimes I'll just try to get a professional to contact them and try to see if they can get them to, to get involved in some type of a program or because there are just so many programs around to help blind people. And Ricky, and expanding the question a bit, based on what you've been through in life, what advice would you give to others who are just having, maybe they're down on their luck, they're going through tough times, they're facing adversity. What advice would you give to them to try to get through it? Uh, I would just say, look, you know, it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah, it's true that no pain, no gain. Sometimes the hardest things in life, we have to push ourselves through and that it can become a wonderful blessing if you just keep going. And even though you can't see the end, just set your sight on, on a goal and try to pursue that goal. And also be around positive people that encourage you. Surround yourself with encouraging people. Try not to be associated with negative people uh, that bring you down. Try to, because I think what really helped me was being around a lot of artists that were very positive and were always lifting me up and encouraging me. And so, that's kind of the philosophy I would give. Now, Ricky, if if somebody wants to, you know, look at your art or or buy some of your art, how can they do that? Well, I have a website online, and it's just rickytrialart.com, or you can just Google my name, pretty much Ricky Trial, on uh, Google, and and I, a lot of things will come up. But on my website, it has my contact information, and it tells like if you want me to speak do a speech at a, a youth group or anything, uh, it tells how to contact me to do that. And uh, and then people can contact me to do a, a commission art piece of art for them. So um, my I think my cell phone number and email address, everything's on, on the internet, probably everywhere. So <laughs> it's easy to contact. Well, I tell you, I, I've, I've been on your website and I've looked at your paintings and it is just, it's remarkable. It's almost hard to believe that somebody like yourself who cannot see can produce such incredible artwork. I would highly encourage everyone listening to go to Ricky Tryon, his website, because you'll just be amazed at what is on there. But Ricky, I tell you, it's been a pleasure having you on. This has been a been a great podcast. I mean, you've got a great inspirational story that that needs to be shared, and I'm and I'm glad we could have you on. But so let's do this. I've I always give the the guest the parting shot, the last word. So why don't you take us home with with some great wisdom or gr- some great advice to end the show? Okay. Well, my greatest uh, wisdom is uh, never quit, never give up. When you fall down, get back up and never be afraid to ask for help or or let people help you. Just don't be so prideful that you think you've got to do it by yourself. 
when you have other people cheering you on and pushing you and encouraging you, it's, it, it makes you reach your goal a lot easier. So, you know, allow people to be your cheerleaders, allow people to push you and, and help you along the way and, and be around uh, positive people that want to see you be successful. And when I go to schools, it's amazing. Even little kindergartners will be saying, you're doing so good, Mr. Ricky. Keep doing. Oh, you're drawing so good, Mr. Ricky. And it's just, it's so inspiring to hear a little, you know, five-year-old encouraging me. And so when I go to schools, it's like, I think I get more blessed than the children. do. They just inspire me too. They push me. Well, and you know, they'll, they'll never forget it when you come to speak to them. You're the one that gets more out of it. But I think the truth of the matter is that when, when they listen to you speak and you tell your story to them, uh, that's something they'll never forget. I hope so. I hope, I hope I'll make a, a lasting impact on their lives. Positive, positive. Well, I, I'm sure you do. Ricky, thanks so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure and um, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, Rod. Great episode with Ricky Tryon. He's not let his blindness slow him down. It's hard to imagine being able to paint by feeling the canvas when the paint dries. I just love this story. Next week's guest is Sydney Bennett. Sydney suffers from functional neurologic disorder that has caused her debilitating neurologic symptoms. She's going to talk about navigating her symptoms and dealing with skepticism about her condition. Going to be a great show. See you next week. So thanks again for listening to Rocket Motivation. I want to again thank our sponsor, Christy McCullough, and her firm, Empowered Family Law. Listeners in the Mobile County, Alabama area, get in touch with Christy and Empowered Family Law for all your family law issues and needs. If you would like to get my book, Get Back Up, it's available at Amazon. Just put in Get Back Up and my name, Rod Cade, and the book will pop up. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to Rocket Motivation wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please rate and review the shows and spread the word about Rocket Motivation to your friends. So until next time, remember, never give up and always get back up.